Hi, everyone. Welcome to Style3D channel. In this video, I'll show you the entire interface framework of our Style3D Studio. This time, we are using the newly upgraded version 8.0. What you see in front of you is our latest upgraded software interface. The software interface is divided into six modules in total. First, the menu toolbar at the top, then, the object browser in the top right and the property editor in the bottom right. There is also the 2D window and 3D window, which occupy the largest area in the middle, and the operation prompt bar at the bottom. We will divide these six modules into smaller sections and explain them one by one later. For now, let's briefly introduce the software interface framework. First, we see the menu toolbar at the top. It includes the File, Undo, and other menu bars, as well as the Home, Assets, and Tools toolbars. Under File, you can find buttons like New Project, Open, Save, Save As, Import, and Export Files. There are also auxiliary functions like About and User Settings. Click on About Style 3D Studio to view the current version number. Click check for updates to see if there are any new versions that can be updated. Open or save as can contain project files with all data, or data files with only garments, avatars, or scenes. You can also import various model files, such as DXF, OBJ, FBX, and other 2D 3D data files. Similarly, it also supports exporting data files in multiple formats, such as DXF, OBJ, PLT, and the following formats. Clicking on About will show About Style 3D Studio and check for updates. User settings allow you to customize software shortcuts and operation settings. That concludes the file section. Next is Undo, Redo, and History Record. Clicking on History Record allows you to locate and restore past actions. We've finished explaining the menu bar. Now, let's continue with the toolbar. The tools in the toolbar can be used to edit, sew, and refine 2D patterns and 3D avatars, among other operations. The first toolbar is Home, which is divided into three areas. The first area is related to pattern tools, such as Select Slash Move, Edit Pattern, Edit Curve, Pen, Rectangle, Trace, etc. The second area contains sewing-related tools, such as Edit Sewing, Fold Arrangement, Add Tack, and Fix Pin. The third area includes measurement tools, such as Edit Avatar Measure and Edit Garment Measure. The second toolbar is Assets which is also divided into three areas. The first area contains assets related to textures and trims, such as edit texture, edit graphic, scene tape, button, zippers, etc. The second area contains tools related to processes, such as edit top stitch, edit piping, and edit puckering. The third area is for lighting-related materials. The third toolbar is Tools. Clicking it reveals a series of tools, including rendering, 2D snapshot, colorways, Python scripts, etc. Once clicked, the corresponding window will appear, and you can perform the related operations. Now, let's look at the basic window operation block in the top right corner. First is the Help button. Click to expand the list, showing the user manual, tutorials, onboarding and hands-on practice as well as feedback, shortcuts, and personal shortcuts. When you need learning support, you can click to jump to the user manual or tutorials here. Next is the Upload to Cloud button, which lets you upload to cloud or update. Next is the gray circle, which represents user information. Clicking it allows you to log out of your account. Next is the Interface Window Adjustment button, which allows you to quickly switch the interface windows. This concludes the Menu Toolbar section. Next, the Object Browser, which shows information about the assets and scenes used in the current project file. Here, you can vertically switch between materials used in the current project, such as fabric, graphic, trims, 
artworks, avatars, etc. The object browser also contains our resource library. Clicking it will show many resources. Here you can open the cloud and download resources. Select the desired resource, double click it to open or add it. Here is a simple t-shirt demonstration. The resource library stores various types of resources by region, which can be switched and viewed on the left. Each region has a download button to download different types of resources. You can add an avatar to the project. After adding, the 2D, 3D, an object browser will show the added avatar's information. Switch to the scene, and you can also see the avatar's information. Switch back to the current asset used. Click on the fabric to find the fabric used in the current garment. It will show a red border in the 2D window to help you see the fabric being used. That's the end of the object browser section. Now, let's introduce the property editor. The property editor allows you to adjust the properties of various materials in the current project file. It is generally used in conjunction with the object browser. Let's use fabric and pattern pieces as examples. Clicking on the fabric allows you to adjust material properties such as textures, stretching, and physical properties like stretching. Next, click on the pattern piece and continue with the demonstration. In the property editor, you can adjust simulation properties like particle distance, extra render thickness, and collision thickness. It also allows adjustments for the pattern status, bonding, edge properties, mesh type, 3D information, and other aspects. That's the end of the property editor section. Next, we will introduce the 2D and 3D windows. Let's start with the 2D window and how to move pattern pieces. Hold the middle mouse button and drag to move the window. Scroll the middle mouse button up and down to zoom in and out of the window. To move a pattern piece in the 2D window, use the Select Slash Move tool. Left click on the pattern piece and drag it to move its position. Now, let's look at the 3D window. Again, hold the middle mouse button and drag to move the window, and scroll the middle button to zoom in and out. Left click on the pattern piece and drag to move it. Since the 3D window is three dimensional, you can hold the right mouse button and move to rotate and view the window. I will also introduce something in simulation mode. Selecting a pattern piece and dragging it simulates the real manual pulling effect around the selected point. In addition, you can see a size and symmetry adjustment tool with a drag and drop function directly below the 3D window in simulated state. And, when dragging, you can also click the shortcut key H to add a fixed pin at the drag and drop location. Now we have finished the 2D and 3D window movement and perspective adjustment. Next, let's introduce the floating buttons at the top of the 2D and 3D windows. Above the 2D window, there are four buttons, fabric, color, pattern, and length. You can open and select these buttons. Fabric can set the texture display of fabric in the 2D window. Color sets the color display for different attributes of the clothing in the 2D window. Pattern sets the display of basic information on pattern pieces in the 2D window. Length sets the edge length of the clothing and the ruler display in the 2D window. Now, let's look at the 3D window. Above the 3D window, there are six buttons, avatar, garment, fabric, color, fitting, and scene. You can open and select these buttons. The avatar button sets the display of model-related effects in the 3D window. Garment sets the display of clothing and stylistic lines in the 3D window. Fabric sets the display of clothing textures in the 3D window. Color sets the color display for various attributes of clothing in the 3D window. Fitting sets the display of avatar and clothing effects under pressure in the 3D window. Scene sets the display of scene elements in the 3D window. To the right, there are the simulation type and real-time rendering settings buttons.
Clicking the simulation drop-down allows you to switch the simulation type. Clicking the real-time rendering drop-down allows you to select different rendering modes for the 3D window and rendering settings. That concludes the 2D and 3D window section. Now let's look at the operation prompt bar at the bottom. It is mainly divided into two parts. The left part is the operation description. Here, we see we are using the select slash move tool. There will be an operation description for this tool. Additionally, some tools will have detailed description links in the operation description. Clicking the link will automatically jump to the help center for related content. For example, for the edit pattern tool, the right part is the version information, which shows the current software version. That concludes the entire interface framework of Style 3D Studio. That's it guys, and I hope some of the tips will help your modeling work. If you like what we do, please liking, commenting and sharing this video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in next video. Goodbye.